people have to remember, three people saw this. Angel, his brother, I think, is a year younger than him, and his father. Angel called 911. The father got on 911 and said the same thing. I saw the creatures about 15, 20 minutes ago. And like I said, I, I'm an experienced investigator full of 40 years of investigative experience, and I did everything I could to see if I get Angel upset to the point where you say, you know, this is this is all made up. But three family members saw this. And I want to say something briefly. I know we're, we're short on time here. But when I was out at the residence on the 27th, and they were showing me where these things were, the where they believe they saw them, and I was standing against a metal pole that was holding up like a carport, and the father, and I'm just a little over six feet, about six feet, six feet one. And he said, that pole you're standing next to, it was taller than that pole. Now, I'm about six one. I looked up. That pole was about eight and a half feet. And Angel said, yeah, it was even taller than that. Now, so that's, you know, in the video that I, or the uh, still from the video that I took, that's accurate from what I saw and what my, my uh, enhanced photo shows. But there's a new video circulating that doesn't show anything close to what I, what I found. I don't know if they're, you know, this brings back the whole thing that uh, when the family did disappear for a while, that they were probably coached and judged maybe, and also uh, whatever, you know, nobody else did any uh, photo enhancement. If you hadn't noticed this, it's weird. Oh, they, they describe what they described. And I tell people, I was not there that night, neither were you. I have nothing to discount what this family said. I mean, it's a nice family. They could have thrown me off the property. Uh, they're, they're a very nice family. And, um, you know, to the point as being is this, okay? You have three people that said they saw a strange creature, and, and they described it. And people want evidence of that. Well, we don't have any evidence. He, he On that video that he showed on his YouTube channel, a lot of people are blowing things up. Even the Baltimore Post Examiner um, blew up the picture. They were the first ones to show the, uh, the photo of the impression on May 27th. That angel took that night when he said the police were in the backyard at 137. Baltimore Pulse Examiner published the photograph. And then when I went back later on, angel gave me the photograph of, of the two sergeants from the Northwest Area Command of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, who we said was about midnight on May 6th, who came back and talked to the father because allegedly what he told me is the cop said the first two officers didn't do something right. Okay. When I first met the family, it was on May 19th. And it was hard that day because they didn't trust me. That's when you saw. Okay, that's interesting. You see them backing out right there? I just wanted to point that out. It's weird. Well, that video clip that you just showed where he's talking to the female, he originally told me it was a journalist. Now, I didn't think okay. it was a journalist, Ashley, because he he got, it was a speed dial. And I, I, journalists wouldn't pick up the phone. He, he told me. He wouldn't me, tell you who it said, was, right? Doug, he didn't tell you who it was, was on the a, phone? Excuse me? Did he tell you who it was on the phone eventually? So just really quick, you, you see when they got close where that spot is on the screen where they block things out? Because they blocked out the actual spot where the aliens were. If you look at the photo enhancement I did, I took it. I took a screenshot before that little thing got there, that 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 uh, tr that thing that blocks the, uh, the screen. And I enhanced that, and that's what I got. So there's no way to refute that. You know, I, I, w I, I made sure to take the screenshot before that, that, uh, that, uh, what do you call it? Blocker or whatever the hell it is, you know, a distortion on the screen appeared and, uh, they do that purposely to, ba to basically block out what's there. You know, it's just sickening actually, you know, I'd love, to, we'd all love to know and see. Yes. It was the female detective who came out to, with the family. There was a male and female after this incident, like days later, who came out and, and talked to them. After the first two officers were out there the morning of May 1st, the two patrol, and you all saw the video on that, the body cam video and all that, mm -hmm. okay? The mother told me when I was there on May 19th that after the first... Okay, right about there, look. First two officers came up. A couple days later, two more cops came, and I believe she's talking about the LVMPD sergeants that I posted the picture on. Okay, the I, let, let me get to that, because I only have about 30 seconds left, but I need you to tell me about the photograph you took of what looked like uh, cameras installed on the roof of the home, and, and those came, what, two weeks after the incident, and then suddenly were, were gone a few days later. Is that the right story? And again, I'm, I'm a bit tight for time. They, was, they, were, they were installed on May 19th in a lamppost in the rear yard of the family's home. They were installed by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Home and Security Division that's run by Assistant Sheriff Sasha Larkin. The, the cameras were there when I saw them on May 19th, 
and they were pulled out three days before May 27th when I went back. And I have that confirmed from the family, and my police sources said those were definitely installed by the technical and surveillance squad that works for Homeland Security under, direct, under the direction of Assistant Sheriff Sasha Larkin, and they pulled them. Now, I want to say something real quick. I know we're short on time here, okay? Mm -hmm. They pulled those they pulled those around May, uh, three days before May 27th. That was this, the second podcast that I aired when I exposed those cameras, okay? Now, there's talk. The, the parents, I said, why did they put them in there? They said, they came to the house and said, we got permission from the owner. We want to put this on your property. Who can we? It's for your protection in case people come. But you got to remember something, okay? This thing didn't go viral to June 7th. The cameras were uninstalled three days prior to May 27th. Well, that, uh, yeah, that's odd, Doug, because obviously, if it goes viral, then I can understand harassment cameras. But before most people even knew about this family or this young man, uh, I wouldn't imagine that you, no, no other harassment complaint. So there's, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. I mean, why would the, you know, uh, I guess the uh, maybe Department of Defense or military or whoever it was that put the cameras there, uh, put it before the actual date uh, like as if also like they knew something ahead of time. You know, I mean, you have to ask yourself that question unless this was uh, an elaborate uh, propaganda hoax of some sort for the government to do something worse than the families involved. That's the only other thing I can think of, you know, and they can coax anybody into doing whatever. Co they can coerce anybody into doing whatever they want. I mean, it's been proven if they can, you know, do a lot of things that they've done here in this country, you know, coercing a family isn't that hard. Let's get cameras like that. Doug, I have to cut it there, but um, the conversation's not over. I hope you'll come back. Yes, because there's a lot more. One, one thing real quick. Real quick. Don't, don't uh, discount that ring camera that what was not in the neighborhood of the house. That was somewhere else on another part of town. That's also being across social media. Okay. And I, I, I cannot verify that where that location was. It definitely wasn't across the street from the home. Okay, so it was another neighborhood, and we're still on verification um, and fact-checking on That's that. That's right. I have no idea okay. where that was. It could have been on the other side of Vegas. He's continuing to investigate this. He's been on it since the beginning. Wow, guys, this is just... Um... You know, they, it's been about eight days now since they did anything, since, you know, since they showed any, uh, you know, uh, footage or spoke to anyone about this. You know, it's kind of gone on hush hush now. And you try to figure out, like, why everything all of a sudden now nobody's talking about it. You know, like, what's going on here? You know, I really feel that there's something that they're that they're hiding or something that they're planning or both. A combination of both, you know, because you can never trust what the government says anymore. You know, I mean, you know, first they admit, yeah, there's aliens and all these things. And now all of a sudden you have this whole thing that popped up overnight. You had the interference with, I guess, I'm, I'm thinking military, you know, interference of some sort or Homeland Security or whatever the hell it may be. And, uh, you know, it's just getting more and more messy. You know, in other words, when things get more and more messy, that means that there is definitely something that they're actually uh you know hiding definitely something and i want to find out and get to the bottom of it but guys uh i'm definitely gonna put some more videos up soon if you haven't seen uh my previous videos please go back and take a look at them i am the spiritual philanthropist uh wandering avatars is my uh channel or the spiritual philanthropist you'll find it in either one all right guys see you soon have a great one talk to you soon Bye bye